can I just say that, you know, when you guys are talking about food, that's something called a trigger point for me. I can't, <laughs> that's something I can't do. If I, if I, if I start talking too much, it's kind of fantasizing about food. I, I, uh, I'll be freebasing in my underwear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Tom, We're not helping with his recovery. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just, you know, it's just the kind of the steps I've learned when I talk to my sponsors, Meatloaf, and, uh, he's, he's actually my higher power. I don't know if I even got that program right, but Meatloaf is my higher power. And, uh, and I've been working with him a lot and, uh, uh, and uh, but I'm just I'm just happy to be alive. Now, are you gonna go and see Craig Gas this weekend too? We're all going to see Craig Gas, and that's why our next guest is the most important man in this room because we're trying to get him on stage this weekend. Oh, who is it? Uh, we actually have in the next room we have Mr. Christopher Walken who's here with us, and we're gonna try to get him on stage this weekend and do some of his jokes. Really? Oh, he gosh. does jokes. He does awful, stupid jokes, and uh, what we're trying to do is we're hoping if we can get him on stage. Uh, that your audience will try to uh, uh, help us campaign to get Mr. Walker to do the stand-up show. All right. With Craig Gass. Cause he's a pretty well-rounded guy. He yeah. dances, he plays cowbell. Yeah. Now we hear he does jokes. He's a white guy. <laughs> he's a white dude. I like that. I just like, I like going out to town. I'm looking forward to this weekend. I'm looking forward to having fun this weekend. I live my life like Michael Jackson did. I say to myself every morning, Mama say, Mama say, I'm a marching song. That's how I live my life. This sounds like it's going to be a great weekend then. It, it, connection. It's going to be a phenomenal weekend. And uh, do you mind if we bring him in? Please. No. All right. Hey, uh, Mr. Yep. Yeah. Mr. Walker. Mr. Christopher Walker, everybody. Nice. All right. All right. How you doing? Great, Mr. Walken. Nice to meet you. It's great to see you. I'm a little starstruck. A little bit. You look like the devil to me. <laughs> his hair is all crazy to me. I don't like the way his hair is looking at me. <laughs> Do you think we could talk him into telling one of his dad jokes? You know, he, he's uh, been, he's looking at his material. You see him looking at his notes. And uh, you just got to remember, his jokes are kind of corny. So, uh, just, you know, don't have any high hopes. But if you like his material, we want you to call the Comedy Connection at 401-438-8383. And we want you to get uh, Mr. Walken to open up the shows. Are we on the air? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's a great joke for you. You tell your kids. What do you call a cow with two legs. I don't know. No. A lean beef. <laughs> That's a great joke. I don't care. I don't care. I, I didn't tell you to have any high hopes for this material. <laughs> when he says it, it's funny. <laughs> it is. It's actually kind of it's kind of endearing, uh, but I feel like I should call my sponsor for this. Uh, well, this is all over. But uh, you got any more material there, Chris? Sure, it's a great joke that Tracy wrote for me. What do you call a fat Chinese guy? Oh, oh no. I don't even want to know. I don't know. I'm going to put my finger on the button just in case. A chunk. <laughs> that's a great joke. <laughs> See, now that's a good joke right there. Christopher! Wow. We didn't even mean it. I wrote that joke for him. <laughs> wow. Oh, you wrote it. I wrote that joke for him. <laughs> that ain't that bad. There's nothing wrong with that joke. <laughs> I didn't you like that joke, I want you to call the comedy connection four three eight eight three eight three and tell them if I don't get on stage, you're going to burn the building down. <laughs> You can't uh, actually threaten physical violence. You got to just uh, a campaign is supposed to be like a grassroots thing. Uh, don't get all tea party on us and uh, you know threaten to hurt people <laughs> or whatever it is those people call themselves. Right. But uh, yeah, and you know what? He actually has a good joke. Uh, if you do that, uh, 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 Hunchback and Notre Dame. That, that's a good one. Have you guys ever heard the Hunchback and Notre Dame joke? I don't think so. Have you ever heard that joke? It's the greatest joke of all time. Okay. By the time I get done telling this joke, not only will we sell out every show at the Comedy Connection with Craig Gantz this weekend, but four people will probably drive the cars right off the road. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the joke about the Hunchback and Notre Dame. Well, it seems that Hunchback and Notre Dame died a terrible, tragic death. Oh. And they needed somebody to replace the Hunchback and Notre Dame. They needed somebody to go up to the bell tower and ring the bell, but nobody wanted that job. Until one day, a man showed up with no arms and said, I'm your guy. And the local people said, no offense, but you got no arms. How are you going to ring that bell? And he said, watch me. And this incredible freak of a man ran up to the top of the bell tower and started slamming his face into the bell. And the most beautiful sound that anybody had ever heard came out of the bell. And when he came back down, they said, listen, you're a freak, but you obviously you got this job. So this man 
carried on the legend of the Hunchback of Notre Dame until one night, a rainy night, thunder and lightning. This no arm man tried to run up to the top of the bell tower to keep his job, and he slipped and fell and died. Oh, no! Landed and died in the middle of the town. And wasn't discovered until the next morning when two local village people, I think it was the Indian and the policeman, <laughs> <laughs> they saw the body of the man with no arms. And one village person said to the other, who's this guy? And the other one said, I don't know, but his face rings a bell. <laughs> <laughs> That's a phenomenal joke, sir. That is unbelievable. <laughs> into a fall. Oh uh, if you like that joke, I want to tell you that tonight and tomorrow night, the greatest weekend ever at the Comedy Collection, we're going to go see Craig Gass. You got to call 401 438 8383 and tell them you want me to open the show or you're going to punch the opening act in the face. No, <laughs> you can't. You can't have it threaten that. You know, I, I, uh, Paul Abdul, who I see at my meetings all the time, told me never to do threatened violence with people. But, uh, but it sounds like a good time, and uh, I think we should get people to call in. Or if you want to have your uh, listeners call in to tell us what else we can do while we're in town this weekend, I'm open to suggestions and any kind of crispies or hush puppies. <laughs> we're going to do a sleeve now. You guys can hang in and comment if you like. I am the sleeve. Yeah, you are. I am the sleeve, baby.